I know I had said that I've been a big advocate of BANT decks being either mid-range or control or aggro or whatever, but the way I was running the mid-range, the boat brew matchup was just way too hard. It's not the Revel arcs that bothered me, it was that they had more card advantage than I did, and they had the uh, early Mog Fanatics to disrupt my uh, Noble Hierarchs and Birds of Paradise. That just it just gave them way too much time to stabilize, so I kind of gave up on Bant for now. I like the deck idea, and I think it's going to be really good once uh, Shadowmore rotates out. Uh, Bant should be the deck to beat, but right now the Boat Brew deck is just too powerful. And uh, what percentage of the field was Boat Brew at? Uh, the standard section of Pro Tour Kyoto, it was like over 30% of the field, which was absolutely insane. So I've changed decks. As you can see from the reflecting pools and the massive amount of vivid lands, I've changed the five color control. I have a couple odd choices in my mana base. Two copies of Rupture Spire, which is pretty much a 75 cent reflecting pool that you can't play uh, first turn. It's still a nice land because it turns on your reflecting pools and you don't have to worry about running out of charge counters on uh, vivid lands. I also have two copies of Exotic Orchard which are really nice, especially at the FNM level because so many people are running vivid lands to fix their mana that it's just reflecting pool number five and six. I have one basic island for Path to Exile I want to get rid of the pain lands in this deck, but I just never bothered getting the filters. I'm looking for a couple Cascade Bluffs and some Sunken Ruins, but no one wants to trade them. Now moving on to the actual engine of the deck, it just wants to uh, play blockers like Kitchen Finks and uh, whatever other creatures you would have floating around to gain life. That's why I like Finks over Warmunk, because uh, it can block two times, and it gains four life, which is just great. Uh, I've got eight card draw spells in here, four copies of Muldrifter, and four copies of Esper Charm, which is what most Quick and Toast decks run. Next, I have four copies of Bant Charm, which is a bit of an unusual pick. Most decks are running Path to Exile just because it's a cheap answer to anything. But I like uh, I like Bant Charm for the versatility because it hits random Warhammers and it messes with uh, the random Esper deck that gets run around here. And it's another counter spell, which lets me run 12 counters instead of 8. I know Broken Ambitions uh, is a card a lot of people like playing in this deck over uh, other counters like Bant Charm, but I like the charms for their versatility. The rest of the counter spells are 4 counter squalls. I was running the gates in here, but then I realized that the life loss from counter squall was actually relevant, so I started running them again. I was just worried about taking pain from the underground rivers, but I've only ever had to take pain twice. And the four cryptic commands are the best counter spell in standard, so that's pretty obvious. We got four Wrath of Gods main deck. I've heard a lot of buzz that the pros are moving Wrath of God to the sideboard in place of Volcanic Fallout in the main deck. But I like having Wrath because it's a catch-all, and it's really nice when you can't get rid of, like, Broodmate Dragons in Jund Ramp and all that. Uh, now let's see what finishers I have in here. Uh, I do like the one of Nuklevi simply because it can be recurred with uh, Cruel Ultimatum, although I've only done that once. It's a 4-4 that gets back Bant Charm or Cryptic Command or Counter Squall or whatever you need. Two copies of Cruel Ultimatum, which is the standard finisher, which is why it was called cruel control for a while, because that's how it ended the game. Generally, if you resolve that spell, nine times out of ten you're going to win. We have a bunch of random one-ofs, like Ona. She's a 
Even if she doesn't attack, she can end the game all by herself. If she resolves in a control mirror, you generally win. A one of Martial Coup, which serves as effectively Wrath number 5, that leaves me threats. It's also nice for making a few blockers in a pinch. Uh, I've got Broodmate Dragon in here as just a one of. I used to be running two in here, and you'll see why. The other one's in the sideboard. Uh, a lot of people are shunning uh, Obelisk of Alara, but uh, I beg to differ with them. Uh, every time I've played Obelisk of Alara, it has saved me. Five life a turn really isn't anything to trifle with. And all the other abilities are usually pretty relevant. Uh, I've stuck an Obelisk of Alara against Esper Control, and they couldn't find a Cryptic Command to bounce it away since they don't play any Artifact Hate. And I just burn them out with the Obelisk or put my life total up too high and then I drop another threat. There's so many naysayers about this card, but when you get this online, it's just incredible how much advantage you can generate. And this leads into uh, one other change that I've made and I've been testing for all I'm pretty happy with. There's a one of Nicol Bolas in here. I'm not entirely confident about putting him in the deck, but... Uh, he's pretty scary. It's not something I could ramp into, but I'm just testing him. I know a lot of people say that you'd must uh, much rather cast Cruel Ultimatum simply because that has an effect on the game now. Uh, Nicol Bolas is something they have to deal with. Because uh, you get you get to at least vindicate something or steal a creature. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Yesterday, when I was playing at Friday Night Magic, I actually got to fire off Nico Bolas's ultimate uh, one time, and everyone in the room was looking at me funny, like I was just smoking pot or something. Anyway, I'd like to move on to the sideboard, which is where uh, the deck really differs. Uh, most people in their sideboards are running uh, Wrath of God if they're running Volcanic Fallout Main, or the other way around. Uh, I found that Burnt and Forge Tender is a problem for the Kitkin decks and the Black White Token deck after sideboards. So instead of running four Fallouts, I'm running two Fallouts and two Infests. Uh, there's the other Broodmate Dragon I mentioned. I've got four Celestial Purges, which are really nice for getting rid of Bitter Blossom, Demigod of Revenge, uh, a number of problem creatures and permits. Uh, it's two mana to remove a Johnny Vengeant from the game, and it's also funny. Uh, I haven't got, I haven't been able to do this yet, but it's funny to say two mana remove Nico Bolas from the game. Uh, they're pretty good. Um, my path to exiles are in the sideboard. You'll notice that since uh, Bant Charm is my spot removal, if I need to bring in more spot removal, I'll just bring in the paths. And here's where my innovation is. I'm testing three copies of Wild Ricochet in the sideboard, uh, mainly against control decks. Because one of the problems that I ran into with uh, the Vengeant Lark deck, uh, five color mirrors, uh, red decks, and Jundrant decks, are that they can reliably get off Banefire for at least five, and I've gotten caught holding Counter Squalls in my hand, sitting at, like, four life, and I have a Banefire pointed at my face. And Wild Ricochet just says no to Banefire. It's, uh, it renders Cruel Ultimatum moot. Uh, it's just such a great card. And I would run it in the sideboard of uh, any deck running red, simply because of how incredible it is against the format right now. Uh, I've got this deck sleeved in, appropriately, Nicobolus sleeves, and 